this whole operation depends on split-second timing. The bonded stores are there. The bullion is in the one nearest to the security office, which is there. There's an airport police patrol which covers the whole of the north side area every 15 minutes. It is between these patrols the job has to be done. The banker has allowed 10 minutes for the whole operation. There's an airport policeman on the main entrance, night and day. But this gate off the bath road is nine times out of 10 left fairly free. That is your way in. You know where the gold has got to go. Zero hour is the first fog at London airport. <laughs> is the BBC Home Service. Here is the six o'clock news. During the past 48 hours, thick fog has blanketed most parts of the country and traffic has been brought to a standstill. British railways, however, announced that their northern services, which were temporarily suspended due to last week's floods, are once more in operation. And their southern services, which were not affected by the floods, are now temporarily suspended due to the fog. At London Airport, the last plane in was the comet from Johannesburg, which landed nearly 12 hours ago. Since that time, all air traffic has been virtually paralyzed, planes being unable to take off or land. Special emergency measures have now been put into operation to warn approaching aircraft of the dangers not only of the worst visibility for years, but also of the crowded state of the runways. Meanwhile, in the airport itself, Hundreds of stranded tourists can get neither in nor out of London. within the next hour. Thank you. Your attention, please. Transatlantic flight 412 will now leave from another airport where the fog is lifting slightly. Will all passengers for New York flight 412 kindly proceed to the east entrance where there's a coach waiting to take them to Hearn Airport? Hearn? Where the heck is Hearn? Who cares? It's good to know it's a place and not a complaint. It's down in Hampshire, normally about a two-hour run from here. Oh, fine. We'll probably spend Christmas there. Young woman. When does all this nonsense stop? Uh, I beg your pardon? I'm so you should. I've been kept here against my will for nearly six hours. Well, I'm sorry, madam, but there's very little we can do about it. And why on earth not? It's no good thinking negatively about things. Negative thought can do nothing. Positive thought can do anything. Now, what about that contrivance you invented during the war? Uh, I'm sorry, madam, I... I... That uh, 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 Pluto thing, I mean, you burnt away the fog with something or other. Oh, you mean Fido? Uh, well, Pluto, Fido, Jumbo. It did away with fog, didn't it? Well, yes, madam. Uh, that, that was, was Churchill, a positive thinker. You could do with a Churchill at this airport. Get Fido working at once. Fido will soon be working. Well, I'm afraid we don't use it in peacetime, madam. It's a little too costly. Too costly? And do you know what six hours here has cost me already? Apart from four cups of tea at the disgraceful well, price... Well, if you'll go and talk to the receptionist, I'm sure she can arrange some sort of uh, transport for you to London. But I don't want to go to London. I want to go to Dublin. Well, they'll fix everything at the reception counter, madam. And don't call me madam. Miss, do I look like a madam? Uh, miss, that announcement, does it mean that all New York planes are coming in at Hearn? No, sir, only outgoing planes. Incoming are being held at Shannon. Shannon? How, how do I get to Shannon? Uh, North Holt or Blackbush Airport, but there's nothing flying at the moment. But it's imperative I meet Pan American Flight 146. Well, I wish I could help, sir. Try Pan American reception. Thank you. 
Position close. Not close. Service. I'm sorry, madam. That counter is closed. Ridiculous. Excuse me. But here, young woman. Don't you realize that this is a time when every able-bodied person should be working for the common cause? Why don't you take your turn? Hush! The plane for Dublin will fly. I'm afraid Dublin planes fly from Northall to Blackbush, not London Airport. Well, then why did your bus bring me here? I'm sure they couldn't have known you were a Dublin flight. As soon as we get the coach back, you can join these passengers going into London. But I don't want to go to London. I want to go to Blackbush Airport. Uh, excuse me, my name's Waterman. I came in on the jet this morning from Johannesburg. How very sporting of you. Oh. Uh, I'm for Dublin, too. Miss, there's someone coming in at Shannon that I simply got to meet. So wherever the Irish planes go from, you've got to get me there. There are no planes leaving for anywhere yet. Nevertheless, I'd feel safer being on the spot. On the spot? If there's a bus going to Blackbush, it could oh. drop me off at Basingstoke. Basingstoke? Yes, I'll live there. Do you mind? Oh, delightful place. We have a minor branch of positive thought there. I don't think I could stand it otherwise. Well, then, that's settled. How many for Blackbush? One, two, three. You see? The will of the people. Transport, please. Terminal. Look, Coach 9 should be there at any minute. Now, send it back as quick as possible. Is he clearing at all? Thicker? How can it be thicker than this? Uh, hold on a minute. Yes, well, look, we must have nine back right away. Mm. Swiss Air wants to move a party of missionaries to Croydon. I don't know how. Calling Coach 12. Hello, Coach 12. Report your position, please. Over. Hello, airport. Coach 12 reporting. About six miles past Maidenhead. Visibility much better. Seems to be lifting. Nine's just in? Fine. Send him back. It doesn't matter. We need him. Transport. Yes. Where to? Blackbush. Listen, dear, I don't care. If she's got six umbrellas, we don't have a coach. Well, who brought Dublin passengers here? Uh, they could probably make Blackbush. It's clearing past Maidenhead. And how do they go? By scooter? We still have emergency relief number 13. Is it an emergency? It's a large woman running amuck with an umbrella. It's an emergency at any airport. Page the relief driver. Oh, okay, okay. If it's our mistake, then we better rectify. Relief coach coming up. Oh, you better check with the duty officer. There'll have to be a stewardess with them. Will the driver of relief coach 13 come to the main entrance, please? Who's on duty and still free? Nobody. They're all out on coaches. What about Miss Nichols? Oh, she's been going nine hours straight. She's just going on leave. She's not, you know. It has half a top and no side flaps. But if you don't mind the fog getting For in... For a bath and some sleep, I'd put up with anything. I don't know if that's very complimentary. I'm much too tired to work it out. Miss Nichols, I wouldn't ask if there was anyone else available. Oh, thanks for the lift, chum. Well, what is it? Lost children, air sick grandmother, or a Pekingese with hysterics? Emergency relief coach to Blackbush. Oh, much worse. Well, give me a Benzedrine and lead me to it. Come on. Driver of relief coach 13, you're wanted at once. Please hurry. Yes, what is it? Am I still in England, do you know? This is the security office. Well, somebody has moved the main entrance. Are you on relief? I shall be if I don't find my coach. They've been shouting for you. You'd better get round to the main departure hall right away. Well, be a pal. Let me get in through here, will you? Ta. That's right. You just stand there and enjoy it. Never mind that. Help me. Oh. Well, don't strain yourself. Why do they make these windows for midgets? They weren't made for that purpose. Neither was I. Excuse me. In transit. No. Oh, no. This place has got more outside than inside. Sorry. Wrong door. Don't ask much out of life. I could ask for a rise, a bonus, danger money, but I don't. I ask one thing only. How do I get to the main entrance? Will the driver of Relief Coach 13 come to the main oh. entrance? Are you the driver of the coach? Yes. Well, why aren't you over transport? Because, because I felt my way to the canteen, had a cup of tea, and then in quick succession, succession, 
I lost me way, me bearings, me coach, and me temper! Driver of relief coach 13, please hurry. That's what I'm trying to do! Let me use your phone, if I may. Hello. Will you give me transport, dear? Yes, that's right, transport. This would have to happen now, just when I wanted a day off. It's my grandmother, poor old soul. Is she dead? No, she's home on leave. Hello, transport? This is Percy Lamb, relief driver. Now, look, don't you start. I don't know where you are, I don't know where the coach is, and I don't know where I am. Now, which would you like me to find first? I'm in the security office. I came in through the window. Now what? They say it's quite simple, they say. They say if I stand with the back of the window, keep going for 150 yards, it's 20 yards past the third bay on the left, they say. Of course, they don't want a driver, they want a mathematician. <laughs> if they're still shouting for me in half an hour, tell them to send out a few St. Bernard's. <sighs> now, uh, left, left, right. One yard. Two yards, three yards, four yards, 210 yards, 211 yards, 212 yards, 213, I don't know. Ah! Hey! Have you seen the airport anywhere? No, mate. Didn't land on this runway. Ha <laughs> ha! Very funny. I hope you get cut off by the tide. I love you too. Ah, ah building. Oh. Terra firma. Will it? <sighs> no, don't tell me, don't tell me. Just let me start again from the beginning. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, did I hurt you? Mm. Mm. Relief driver, please. We're still waiting for you. All right, I'm here. Good. Drive. Sorry, miss, are we having a cuppa? Well, bring up the relief coach. We're waiting for it. Aye, aye, Captain. You don't happen to know where it is, do you? The usual place behind the security shed. The secure? Hmm, hardly comical. I've just come from there. Oh, it's a game, this is. And as quick as you can, we're taking a party of four to Blackbush. To where? Blackbush. You don't mean Shepherd's Bush, do you? No, Blackbush Airport. It's clearing down there. It won't be too bad a drive after Maidenhead. Oh, Blackbush Airport. Oh, hmm. She's raving mad. I don't know. Not Shepherd's Bush, Blackbush. She might just as well have made it Mulberry Bush. Not unless you're my grandmother. Were you calling me? I said, nope. Oh, no, wait a minute. Wait. I'm trying to get Houston 0001. Please insert four pennies. Well, I've just done that. Then press button B. Well, that's no good. I've just pressed button A. Don't press button A until you're connected. I had to press it. You couldn't hear me. I'm afraid you'll have to put in another four pennies. Oh, I, I haven't got another four. Look, I'll put in sixpence. I know it's too much. Cost me ten pence already. Look, just get me the number, there's a good girl. I've only got a ten bob note left and I can't put that in. As if I hadn't got enough worries. Just a minute, please. Press button A, caller, you're through. Hello, Gran? Gran? Grandma? I can't hear a word you're saying, dear. Oh, I bet she's got a shawl in her mouth. That's better, yes. Look, gra Look, let me do the talking, dear, because this is costing me money. I said it's costing me money. Now look, I won't be home till late. Because I'm going out on a job. Yeah. A job, dear. Work. You know, what Grandpa never did. <laughs> oh. There's a cottage pie in the oven. A cottage pie. Oh, whatever's come over. Can you hear me now? 
How to do? Look, dear, don't wait up for me, cos I'm gonna be late. No, uh, no, dear, I'm not going out with a girl. I'm going out with a coach. A coach? You know, a big thing on four wheels. No, not the girl. Look, I, I must go now, dear. There's a woodpecker tapping at the window. Yes, all right, yes, ta-da, dear. Well, keep warm. <laughs> yes, we'll, we'll get, in the, get in the oven with the cottage pie. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You'll get an ulcer, you will. Oh, I didn't want you to hurry. I've just got to empty the box. Well, now you've emptied it. Empty the box. Uh, excuse me, are you the postmaster general? Oh, no, uh, not yet. Uh, I'm just a collector. Well, you've collected sixpence too much. Thank you. Oh, well, if you've oversubscribed, a letter stating the salient points, noting the regional area, and the chronological order of events, to the telephonic accounts department will no doubt bring you a satisfactory reimbursement. Yes, I won't bother. Oh, no, please. Uh, the post office is most meticulous about that sort of thing. Where were you telephoning to? London. Oh, but London is only fourpence. Well, nice to have met you. Oh, no, no, I shall check the money immediately. But look, I've got a coach to find. I've got a crowd of people waiting for me. Oh, oh I'm sorry. You're welcome. Um, Oi, hmm? uh, sir, could you tell me the way to Blackbush Airport? It's down the Southampton Road. You can't miss it. Are you kidding? Can't miss it. <laughs> now I've lost the coach. Coach? Coach, coach, coach? Oh, don't mess about. <laughs> oh! Blasted thing. Oh. Blackbush. I hope you're pointing the right way. If I have to turn you around in this, we've had it. And six hours ago, I really... Are you the driver? Yes, ma'am. Oh. What's she humping about? Your destination, Miss Beeston? Dublin. Where else should I be going? Oh, oh I shall have to tell her. Shh. Edward Schroeder for Shannon. And your name, sir? Oh, I'm so sorry. Henry Waterman. I'm going to Dublin, too. Dublin? They'll be lucky if they get as far as Blackbush. What's your name? Uh, Percy Lamb, Miss Relief Driver. All right, Percy. Let me have the key to the boot and you can put the luggage in. Look, Miss, I've never been to Blackbush before. You'll have to help me. I will. Just turn left when you get out of the gate. Ah, yes. The thing is, how do we find the gate? By what radar? Me, Percy. I know. What do you think I'm doing? Scratching myself? I can't find it. Oh, well, never mind. There isn't much luggage. We'll put it in the coach. And you, misery guts. You've got a right one here. Now, Percy, you're going to get yourself into trouble. Well, she gets you down. Yes, you, dear. I don't know. Have you seen the main gate recently? You're about to go through it. Good. Well, I hope it's open. Do you mind if I hitch a ride? Not if you want to go to Blackbush. I hear it's clearing out there. I'm off duty. I'm trying to catch a lift to the continent. There may be a crate going out from there. That's a very exclusive party you've got here. Good evening. Oh, this is going to be a matey ride. Or, uh, is it? I should save that for the continent. Young man. Are you the captain of this bus? No, I'm just a passenger. Miss... Uh... Nichols, can I do anything for you? Well, surely the driver can go faster than this. Well, it's pretty thick at the moment, but they say it's clearing further on. Oh. Do you think it would help if I were to walk in front? Well, what a noble gesture. But I could never countenance that. Oh, that's quite all right, really, if you're in a hurry. What a sweet little man you are. I shall come and sit next to you. But I like to be by the window. 
Well, I only thought you'd see that if I was to walk in front oh, with a torch... Oh, what's that pretty book you're reading? Oh, that, oh, well, that's a seed catalogue. Oh, now, isn't that fun? <laughs> you shall read bits of it aloud to me. Then the journey won't seem so long. <laughs> Did you know the only way to kill a zombie was to squirt hot wax over him? I didn't, but I'll make a note of it. Calling relief coach 13. Relief coach 13. Calling relief coach 13. Over. Stiffen the crows. Boy, turn it up, falling like that. My stomach went over. Is that relief coach 13? Yes, it is. I've seen that before. I shouldn't have taken this job. Visibility is pretty bad around Slough, but it's lifting beyond there. Keep in touch if you have trouble. Right. I get lonely. We can play 20 questions. And what is all that supposed to be? Hello. We got a right lot here. Hello. Are you there? Close all gates and put in a general security call. I want a list of all commercial vehicles out of here in the last hour. Trouble? Bullion robbery. Someone's left 200 gold bars. Close all gates immediately. Repeat, general security call. Close all gates immediately. Will all passengers please remain where they are? Whichever section of the building you are in, please cooperate. Oh. They bypassed the windows and floors, that's why there was no alarm. Where's the other guard? So far, he's missing. How do you feel? A bit dizzy, sir. I'll be all right. Bring him up when he's had a rest, will you? Sir, I just found this, 50 yards back there. Yes, that looks like the tin opener. Bring it in, will you? Yes, sir. Any luck? We're going to need more than luck. This looks like the banker. Who's the banker? I'd like to know. So do a lot of insurance companies. If it's gold, it's usually the banker. Clear this road of vehicles, will you? I want to take a tire check. Well, it's already been closed. And transport have a list of all outgoing commercial vehicles, but I'm afraid we don't check private cars. I'm not worried about private cars. 200 gold blocks need something heftier than a private car to move them. I haven't got a clue where we are. I haven't seen the curve for half an hour. My nose is running, my eyes are watering, and a Merry Christmas to the lot of you. I'll tell you this, if anyone else wants to have a go, I'd just as soon walk in front with a box of matches. I'm telling you. I had no idea it was this thick. Till it lives, frankly, I think we should stay here. Stay here? Heaven knows where we are or where we'll end up. We could take a vote. But I have to get to Dublin. And I to Shannon, but if we miss one plane, we can take another. You don't think we've passed Basing stuff? Quiet, girl. Look here, my good man. I am chairman of the Positive Thought Rally. Maybe, but... Uh... There are no buts in Positive Thought. The thought is the will is the deed. Well, we could do with some Positive Thought to find a positive curb. I've had enough of your insolence. Let me by, little man. I must face up to that driver. I shall report you to the Air Marshal. As far as I'm concerned, Mrs. He shall be fired. Now, Miss Beeston, please. Drummed out of the Air Force. I have got a torch. Perhaps it, it, it would help if somebody walked in front for a little way. Well, I think that's an excellent idea. We'll take it in turn. Now, wait a minute. It isn't up to passengers. Oh, well, we don't mind. mind. I, I am a passenger. Wait. Wait. Please wait. What is your name, little man? Henry Waterman. Please take care, dear Mr. Waterman. Put on your coat, I beg of you, oh. and your hat. Oh, thank you. Ah, oh, well. He might, for all the world, be Hilary of Everett. I'm afraid I'm not much good at this. You and me both, mate. Just find the curb and lead me to it. Well, you're still on the road anyway. That's me, boy. Cat's eyes. Anyway, we're still on the road. You ever read a book called The Corpse Sat Up? The Corpse Sat Up? Yes, it was just like this. Man went off into the fog and they never saw him again. They found his head on top of a scarecrow. Well, I'm glad you came, dear. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you found the curb yet? Oi! <whistles> Don't 
Don't mess about. We're getting a lot tonight. Hey! Can you hear me? Oh, never again. Not this time, I wouldn't. Hello! You want me? No, I want a second torch to go and find the man with the first torch. Well, he can't be far. Mr. Waterman! Mr. Waterman! Well, the fog didn't sound. I think someone should go and look for him. All right, let's go. And someone should stay with the ladies. Of course. Come on, hang on to this and don't let go. Don't worry, I won't get lost. No, but I might. If anything has happened to that gallant little man... Oh, he'll be all right. You know, in the book, the corpse sat up. Sit down. I warn you, I shall personally sue the company on his behalf. Mr. Waterman! Waty! If you've seen any scarecrows, run for your life. <laughs> I talked to the exchange to see where we are. Did you? Yes, we've just gone through Slough. And they say it's quite clear past Maidenhead. That's about another four miles. That was very clever of you, Mr. Waterman, but you had us worried. Worried? Yes, going off like that. I'm responsible for you lot. Oh, I say, well, I'm very so sorry, Mr. Waterman. It was a brilliant idea. Now, if we can get back to the coach, we can... Uh... Oh, we can get back all right. Just follow this. It's the luggage straps. They're tied to the headlamps. Don't worry, I got it. Come on, follow me, leader. Here is the official weather forecast up till noon tomorrow and the outlook for the following 24 hours. Fog. Hey, Water, we can go faster than that. The road bends to the left now. I've been bent that way for the last hour. All right, talk. I already told them. We're coming off the road by mistake. In all this fog, you don't know where you are. That's what I thought. Thanks. So you hid in the fire bay. We wasn't hid. We was trying to find the road. Five foot ten, medium build, wavy brown hair, thin moustache. Age 42, released Parkhurst, 24th of February. Seven years robbery with violence. That's very nearly a pen picture, isn't it? All right, so I got a record. Is that any reason for the police to persecute me? I know nothing about it. About what? Whatever it is that's eating you. You've got nothing on us. Nothing at all. Unless somebody's fingerprints are on this, then somebody may get ten years. All right, take them away. Wait a minute. All right. I'll help you if you'll help me. I'll make no bargain. Shut up, you mad! I'm not taking a rap like that for a stinking hundred quid. Who paid you? Paid by post. Who from? I don't know. Hundred pounds comes by post. You don't know from whom, but you know at once it means you've got to go to London Airport and blow open a security shed. It was planned that way for the first fog. Who planned it? I don't know. Where did the banker tell you to hide the gold bars? We would have put them in. <laughs> who said anything about the banker? I did. And I serve you. Who is the banker? We don't know, and that's right, the truth. We would put the bars in the luggage boot of the BRAC coach. The banker or one of his men was going to drive them out during the fog. Which coach? One that's still behind the security shed. The emergency coach, number 13. The relief coach? Holy smoke. Where is coach 13? Somewhere between here and Blackbush. Contact it. Who's on it? Six people. Get me the list. How did you find out about this relief coach? We watched it for three weeks. Where from? House overlook at the airport. Which house? 23 Heathway. Check it. Calling relief coach 13. Relief coach 13, come in, please. Over. Relief coach 13, answer, please. Over. They're not replying. Keep calling. They may have switched off. He can't switch off his speaker, only his mic. Well, keep at it till he does answer. We haven't got a passenger list for 13. Why not? It went out in a hurry. The stewardess must have taken both copies. Well, who sent it out? The duty officer. I'd like to see him. Where did you send these reports? A man came to us a week to collect them. What man? I don't know who he was. Can you describe him? Yeah. Go ahead. Hello. Well, he was about... Duty officer? Here you are. Hello, Coach 13. Are you receiving me? Coach 13, over. Calling relief coach, relief coach 13. Please reply. This is urgent. Where are you, driver? Oh, 
Oh, let's have it. What? The torch, come on. I'm not Tarzan. No, let's see what it says. Well, do we know where we are? Well, they haven't come back yet. Look, Nicky. My name is not Nicky. Well, what is it, then? Miss Nichols. I prefer Nicky. It's a matter of taste. Don't you think that you and I should be on the same side? We have been, both on the inside. Look, for heaven's sake, I'll take the torch as soon as he gets back. If you really want to know, the blonde begged me to stay in the coach. The blonde? Yes, she was scared stiff. Not the thriller queen? Hmm. Oh, it's a game this is. I'm sick of this. Hello there! What, did you learn anything? Yes, to mind my own business. Percy, what happened? Isn't it marvellous, eh? Six million signposts in Great Britain, and I had to pick this one. I know. I think I know where we are. Yes, I'm sure I know what's happened. We took the left fork past Maidenhead. And this should be on the road to Bletchington. I know it well. There's a large flower nursery there by a windmill. I saw a windmill just now. Yes, a windmill on the other side of the road. Then this is Bletchington. Good for you. Off we go, You're a very clever little man. Jonas, I protest, you're submitting your passengers to great danger. Danger? Well, certainly, to drive a coach this size in this visibility is extremely dangerous. Oh, nonsense. We know exactly where we are now, thanks to clever Mr. Waterman. How do we know? Just because we passed a windmill? We might be anywhere. But unless we cross the channel, it can't be Holland. Now, Percy... Well, it gets on your nerves. Let him have a go. Paint and all. No one's blaming you, driver. I just think it would be safer to stop here. No, I don't brook no delay. Press on, driver. Well, I'd sooner do that than park here and get another car up my boot. Well, the high street can't be more than two miles ahead. All right, I'll take the torch. Oh, no, no, please. I know I've not been very good so far, but I know the road now. Oh. Of course you do, little man. I'll see you're mentioned in the next issue of thought. Oh, thank you. You're very kind. Oh, not at all. Thank you. Get your medal later. Come on, let's get moving. Oh. One meets so many gentlemen on these trips. I went ahead of you because it seems simpler than getting out. Well, I don't wish to... Ah! Are you all right? I dropped my book, that's all. Sorry, got some fog in my gears. Calling relief coach 13. Coach 13, over. Now what? Coach 13? Yes. Well, where have you been? Where are you, driver? Where are you? We lost your clot. Now listen carefully, driver. I want you to close the window partition behind you and let me know when you've done it. Now look, Cocker. We've now got don't talk. Trouble. Do it. All right, it's closed. Right. Now I want you to stop at the nearest habitation you can find. Use any excuse. Engine out of water, anything. And let me know where you are. Is that clear? Is this a joke? You've got 200,000 pounds worth of gold bullion in your luggage boot and the person who stole it probably among your passengers. Does that sound like a joke? Hello? Driver. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Mr. Inspector. Detective. Right. I'm holding you responsible for its safety until the police get there. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Mr. Inspector. But we can't do anything until you let us know where you are. I think we're near a village called Bletchington. Bletchington. I don't know that one. Well, do me a favor. Look it up. We're doing that now. Yeah, what? What's visibility like? Don't mess about. Switch on and tell them it's clearing a bit. It's clear. It's clearing a bit. Good. We'll stay on this end. Switch off. Tell them not to call you until you call them, in case someone hears. Don't call me until I call you, in case someone hears. Good man. I'll switch off. Now, now keep driving and don't stop until you're told. Something unpleasant might happen. Our friend, the driver, is doing pretty well. Well, what about clever Mr. Waterman out there all by himself? And none of you big, strong men helping him. Oh, blimey. We've hit something. I didn't stop on purpose. Honestly, I didn't. Well, nobody minds, Percy. Why get in a state? You've done very well. Well, I just didn't want anyone to think I'd stopped on purpose, because if I hadn't, if I hadn't hit something, I shouldn't have stopped at all. I just want everyone to believe that. Relax, Percy. It is Percy, isn't it? Yes, sir. I'll drive straight on, sir. Well, you can't drive on with that lot on the front. We've got to see what damage we've done. What? Yes, sir. Anything you say, sir. Oh, you've done miracles so far. Nobody could have done better. 
Let's go and do a little reconnaissance. Well, someone's mad. Ah! It could only happen to me. Feel somewhere. We've gone through some boundary wires. Where's Percy? In the coach. He's not. What? Percy! 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 Hello! Oh, Percy, no! Oh, the kiss of death, that's me. Oh, good Lord, what happened? I'm sorry, sir. I did what you said. I got out, but I fell in. I'm ever so sorry, sir. What are we doing in a field? Oh, because the driver was told to press on. Stop! You know, a driver once lost his way and drove a car into a cemetery by mistake. Well, I don't wish to know about it. And suddenly the whole earth gave way, and he fell right down into a mausoleum, car and all. A mausoleum? Yes, it was called Shrouds Don't Talk. The book should be banned. What was there? What? Did you hear a shout? I can't hear a thing. Me ears are ringing. Please stand clear of the boot. There's someone shouting out there. Hello? Who are you? Hello there! Just drive myself. <laughs> Oh, thank heaven! I thought I'd lost you for good. Oh, you poor dear little man. Are you all right? Yes, yes, I'm all right. But you've come right off the road. I was on it when you turned off. Stand clear, please. You strong men ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Letting him walk in front all the time while you sit back in comfort. Comfort? <laughs> Don't you worry, Mr. Waterman. You go and sit down. I should hope so. And I'll leave the next stretch. You'll do nothing of the sort. You'll stay with your passengers. I happen to be in charge of this coach. Now listen. You listen. If you don't mind, I'll give the orders. You know, I'm worried. Well, don't be. There's nothing to be frightened of. Oh, I'm not frightened. I'm worried we've passed bathing so. Yes, thank you, dear. In the coach, before I go berserk. Percy, do you think you can back onto the road? Back onto it? I can't even forward onto it. Wait a minute. Where's Schroeder? Schroeder? Yes, he got out with me. Have you seen him? Well, he's probably inside. Well, I've taken some bearings. I won't say a word, sir. What's the matter with you, man? Pull yourself together. Together, sir. Is that Schroeder? It's Mr. Schroeder, yes. There seems to be a small village ahead of us. Well, how do you know? Because I had the common sense to go and look. The road rises over there, and you can just make out the houses. Well, let's get to it for my sake. I've got a call to make. A call? Yes. Well, uh, well, I, I've been driving for hours. Anyone at home?
been reporting. Go ahead, we're listening. Not so loud. Well, we're here. Well, I don't know. You try to be funny. It's not so loud. It's a village. We're trying to find out which one. Now look, I know about your being in charge, but I'd like to suggest that nobody gets off this coach until we've explored the rest of the village. Suggestion accepted. Good girl. But without prejudice. Shall I tell them? You may tell. I don't know. We came here across a field. All right. Are you sure the boot's locked? Quite sure. Where's the key? Somewhere in the lining. Oh, blimey. The scarper, go on, scarper. Hello? Driver. Hello. Go on, go on. Driver. Shut up, go away. Hello. Go, on, go away. All right, but leave your mic on. Seems to be deserted, this end. It looks like an inn or something over there. Come on, let's investigate. What, me? Who's the girl? The stewardess, Miss Nichols. Ah, oh, Percy, don't tell me you're scared. All right, I'll keep it a secret. Percy, who? Do we know who this driver is or not? Oh, they're still checking. Must be someone about somewhere. All right, stand by. Well, if I lived here, I wouldn't be about. Well, there's Bletchington. They're not there, so where the hell are they? I'm right behind you. Say, I could have walked this way, I could have walked that way, but no, this is me. I see you're bleeding. Well, if I am, I'm gushing oil. The quicker we light this, the better. Well, this is all very strange. House across the road was deserted, too. And yet someone had made some tea there quite recently. And now this. Oil in the lamps. A packet of reasonably fresh crisps. Look, miss. I'm not supposed to say a word to a soul. But if I keep it to myself much longer, I shall burst. Oh, we don't want you to burst, Percy. Now, what is this dread secret? Secret? Well, uh, well, uh, it's my driving license. It's out of date. Oh, is that all? I thought you'd at least rob the Bank of England. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll get back to the coach. You'll stay here. But uh, it's out of the engine running. I turned it off. But I'll get the ignition key. Here it is. Oh. I also switched off the microphone. It was whistling. Ooh. Well, I think this will make as good a headquarters as any. Headquarters? Yes, we can build a fire and at least try and make them comfortable until we've got time to find out where we are. But you just said keep everyone on the coach. Yes, well, I've changed my mind. Oh, you've changed your mind. They'll be safer in here. I'll go and get them. You stay here. I'll stay here. And light a fire. Now, just a minute before you start taking over command, Captain. The first officer. Listen, first officer, sir. Light a fire. Well, no. Nobody is getting out of that coach until I found someone who can tell us where we are. Well, if for heaven's sake, listen to me for a minute. I don't think you're going to find anyone. I suppose it's a ghost village. Now, look, Nick. Miss Nichols. You're responsible for those people's safety. Because I like you, I'm giving you a tip. Bring them in here. Well, he asked us to keep quiet. It's 20 minutes now. Call him. I'd go a lot to know who switched that coach microphone off. It wasn't the stewardess and it wasn't the driver, because we heard them leave. If only we knew who the other passengers were. Well, in normal events, we'd have a passenger list. Yes, in normal events, I shouldn't ask to see it. Yes, yes, I'm ready. Put your screen. Twyford. Wargrave. Risley Carmen. Bracknell. Shiplake. Winkfield. Is that the lot? Uh, hold on. That's another seven places they're not at. We've covered the local police in every village in the ten-mile radius of Maidenhead. Extended to fifteen. Extended by the five. Yellow-fringed trumpet, large and reliable. One and nine a dozen, thirteen shillings for a hundred. And then for two and six, a packet of twenty-five seeds. There are the silver medal, the Scottish petunia, trial petunias, called Naughty Marietta. Naughty Marietta is ideal for warm bedding. Naughty, Mr. Waterman. <coughs> Polyanthus, Cervantes, 
primrose yellow of good size and very well. Well, I found a jug. And I have found a tub. What, no beer? Well, if there is, it's too weak to crawl out. Now, if we can find something to boil water in, we can have some coffee. If we had some coffee. I've got a tin of quick cafe. You know, I always wonder what you kept under that hat. It's in the coach. I'll go and get it. Just a minute. Surely to heaven someone's going to try and find out where we are. I could do that at the same time. Oh, it's ridiculous. Just sitting here. All in good time, Mr. Schroeder. Good time? I don't want to stay in a derelict barn drinking coffee. Weren't you the gentleman who kept on insisting we stopped? I prefer it in the coach. Oh, no, it's much more fun here. But I'd like my rug. We're a little cold. Atmospherically speaking. All right, get a rug. Yes, sir. And I'll come with you. Yes, sir. Oh. Well, you will come for your coffee, won't you? Well, that was the idea. It's the best idea yet. If you're going to the coach, there's another book in my beach bag, Torso for Sale. Torso for Sale? That's right. Would you be an angel? Well, I think we shall all be angels soon. Well, some of us. Sunrise Sweet Pea. Glowing cerise with a fleeting orange, becoming more intense in the sun. One and six for 36 seeds. What a bargain. Torso for sale. She must be raving mad. Well, I wouldn't do this job again for all the tea inch. I wouldn't do... Blood. Hey, what are you doing? I think I'd open up the boot. I'm not. Well, what's the use? There's no rugs there. I, I've looked. I mean, I've... There's no... Give me the key. I've lost it. Well, find it. <laughs> Some maniacs trying to kill us. That mate was a ruddy hand grenade. Keep your head down. I'm getting back to the pub. You stay where you are. Please yourself. Someone's coming. Is everyone all right? So far. But who screamed? I don't know. I was outside looking around. You no business to be outside. I said everyone was to stay inside. I am not in the habit of taking orders unless they're given to me by somebody in authority. Sorry. But you can see for yourself, it isn't very healthy outside. Someone's trying to take a bead on us. I wasn't as prepared for that as you. I'm going back to the others. We're all going back, but let's do it sense. Yes, on hands and knees. Now, look, if the marksman's still there, four of us running back together will be a perfect target. Whichever way we go, it would be safer to run the open space between here and the inn. All right. You follow me. Then Miss Nichols and then Percy. And make sure the spacing isn't too even. If he once gets the rhythm, he can start sighting. That's right. And get a perfect tempo for muggins here. I know it sounds daft, but you would have believe this. Believe what? There's 200,000 pounds worth of gold bars hidden in that boot. There's what? If I never stand here again, and I hope I won't. But how do you know about it? The police have just been on the blower. And that first officer's got a gun, and he's stabbed in me back. And he seems to know too much about everything. And I don't like the look of that Mr. Schroeder. And now someone's popping off guns at us. Oh, I wish I'd never taken this job. Nicky! Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. I forgot the coffee. What do you mean he stuck a gun in your back? In the coach. He told me to keep driving or else. Then he told me to open the boot. If you're dreaming all this up... Dreaming it up? You talk to the airport. Find the passenger list. It's on the back seat. I'll get the airport. I'm going mad. I know I'm going mad. This is Stuart S. Nichols, BOAC. I'm speaking from Relief Coach 13. Yes, Miss Nichols, go ahead. The driver's just told me we've got some unexpected cargo. Is that right? That's quite correct. This is Detective Inspector Henley. Where in heaven's name are you? We're in a village that seems to be deserted and someone is popping off with a gun. We should be in the Maidenhead area. But where? We've checked every little village on the map in that area. All right, take a distance check. The mileage on the speedometer is 18430. 18430. 
1430. That's right. If transport have a record of what it was when we left, you can work out how many miles we are from you. AC pilot with us, Peter Jones. He jumped the coach at the last minute. Fine. We'll check on those names and get back to you in 20 minutes. The time now is 8.17 exactly. The driver said Jones threatened him with a gun, but I've got so I don't trust anybody. Uh, the driver's all right. George Davis. We've checked on him. Who? George Davis, your relief driver. We'll get back to you in 20 minutes. Instead of holding it in, I let it out. Don't fuss. You can. Here. Look, miss. You know, I think it would be a good idea if we all sat down and put some cards on the table. I bet I've got the ace of spades. All right. You might as well all know it and face up to it. We're all in considerable danger. Danger? There's something in that coach that somebody wants very badly. I believe they'll go to any lengths. I also believe that that person is amongst us at this moment. Well, don't look at me. And while we're putting our cards on the table, well, let me tell you this. This chap's got a gun, and he's stuck it in his back while we were driving. And in the back of the coast, there's a... No, you go and find out for yourselves. You know, in the book, girl... Oh! Oh, quiet, girl. Young man, I must insist that you be more explicit. What something on the coach, and which somebody? And what are you doing sticking guns at people? I assure you, madam. Miss! I'm sorry, but I haven't got a gun. And even if I had one, I'd hardly stick it into anybody's back while we were all on the coach together. Oh, there's a liar. No gun, eh? You wouldn't like to be searched, would you? Why not? Go ahead. Oh. Yes, go ahead. Search, Mr. Davis. I will. And my name's Lammis. Yes, I thought it was. Whether he's got a gun or not, he couldn't have shot it himself out there. Thank you, sir. That's the first intelligent remark on the subject. Are you satisfied? You've hidden it. Sometimes they have them strapped round their leg. I say, do you mind? You've got it strapped on your leg. Surely, if there's any searching to be done, we ought to be outside, looking for the gun that sniped at us. I think if we uncover a few home truths about ourselves first, the job will be much simpler. What do you mean by that, Lamar? I mean we should all show our passports. I don't see what that'll prove, but I'm quite willing. Edward Schroeder. That's uh, quite a fat wallet you've got there. Hmm, fat, but gunless. And I'm quite willing to be searched. Well, the first person who tries to search me will get hit. Oh, you won't be searched, Miss Beeston. We just want to establish identity. Oh, well, that I will do. But any further liberties, and I wish to warn you that once at Boulogne, I seriously defaced a customs officer. Now, we know that wherever they are, they're about 33 miles away, allowing for any detours they may have made in the fog. Now, I want every village in that radius double-checked. Get the mobiles to cover all roads out of Middlesex, Oxford and Hampshire. Not much on the passengers, I'm afraid. Neither Blackbush nor North will have any booking record at all in the name of Beeston or Waterman. What does that mean? Well, it's not unusual. You know, the Irish planes are fairly regular. A lot of people just go to the airport and take the first seat. What else? Pan Americans say that uh, Mr. Schroeder did call and inquire about Shannon arrivals. A uh, Janie Gray was on the incoming Nice plane, and we do have a pilot officer, Peter Jones. But as far as anyone knows, he's on leave on the continent. Uh, hello? Uh, Spencer here. Continue checks on Triangle, Reading, Basingstoke, Heathrow. Also, three county stop. Immediate. Well, that's a beautiful circle, isn't it? Calling control room. The police want mobile transmitters to cover all arterial roads from Heathrow through Middlesex and Oxford. Control tower checking. Mobile transmitters covering all airport entrances. No change in met weather reports, but Black Bush report ceiling lifting slightly. Let's hope the Nichols girl has some news. Seven minutes to go. Better stand by. I'm sorry I had to do all this, but under the circumstances... Oh, that's quite all right. I'm sure we all feel safer knowing we're all who we say we are. And did anyone have any doubt as to who I am? No, 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 no. I didn't mean you, my dear madam. Miss! However, there's still time. So you're back. 
Thank you, Miss Grant. You can read them if you like. You've told us all the best parts. Oh, but in this one. Uh, thank you, Miss Grant. Oh, you don't know what you're missing. And the only piece of identification you can produce is this football coupon. Well, I don't take a passport with me for a bus ride, do I? It's got me neighbourly, doesn't it? Yes, Percy Lamb. Well, who do you think I was? Jack the Ripper? No, someone quite different. How dare you? Can I go and wash my hands? Yes, of course. Where? 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 I've no idea. Upstairs, I suppose. Where are you going? About my business. Nicky, for God's sake, have some sense. There's a gun out there somewhere. We've got to stay put in here until the fog lifts. You of all people should know it's our duty to report to the airport. All right, I'll do it. It happens to be my job. Why, have you found a telephone? No, it's a radio, Coach. Why? Nothing, but I'd have asked you to send a message for me before this. What message? Please call my office, Temple Bar 7407, and tell them that my brother will need a large car for all his luggage. Temple Bar 7407. Thank you, yes. I'm glad to know that at least we're in contact with the outside world. You know, I think we might make some of that coffee. A very good idea. And you will send a message to my sister, Hounslow 1903, and say that no matter how late I am, she must wait up for me. That's the least your company can do. Certainly. Anyone else want anything? Yes, I want to wash my hands. Well, wash them. But where? Oh, you give her the ad dabs you do, mate. I'll reconnoiter. And don't ask me what it means. Right, you take care of the coffee. I've got to trust you, you've got to trust me. The tin's in the kitchen. Would you open it for me? Perhaps I could wash my hands in there. No, that's the kitchen. Percy will find it for you. I'm talking to you because we both have a uniform in common. There are lots of things I'd like to tell you, but I think there are one or two things you ought to tell me first. Such as? You seem to know more about this than any of us. I don't know anything. Except that someone's firing at us, and we've got a coach full of assorted question marks. You know nothing? No more than you. Then how do you know about what's in the coach? How do you know? I was told. When you weren't there. I'll sue somebody for every penny. Percy, for heaven's sake. I bet it's a council house. Are you all right? I'm not saying a word till I get my solicitor. I do want to wash my hands. Well, hurry up, girl, because I think I do as well. It's at the end of the passage. But supposing I fall through the floor? Would you? Oh, come on, we'll test the floor for you. Oh, it's a game this is messing about like this. I'm sick of it. I'm not going to faint. I'm not going to faint. I'm not going to faint. Oh, of course. Yes, I am. Mrs. Mrs. Now, oh. come on, pull yourself together, girl. Loosen anything that's tight. And do you, you know... The thought is, the will is the deed. Well, this is one deed you have to do yourself, girl. Take your mind off things. <laughs> uh, what about some party games? Party games? Oh, party games. <laughs> I know. We have a sweepstake. A sweepstake? A what? Well, we'll put each name on a piece of paper and half a crown in the kitty, and whoever turns out to be the culprit, their name takes the pot. I know whose name I'd like. Hello, airport. Hello, coach 13. Miss Nichols? Yes, things are a little difficult here, and I haven't much time. If I switch off in the middle of this, don't call me back. All right, go ahead. First, I want you to make quite sure of the driver's name. Your driver? You said it was George Davis. That's right, it is. Well, it isn't. It's Percy Lamb. Getting deeper, aren't we? Now, listen. Somehow or another, you've got to get the key to that boot and lose it. That I can do. Hey, you can take your ticket. Oh, where's Miss Nichols? Oh, she can take hers in a minute. These are big ideas. Ah. I don't know if pick up I do. Oh, well, I better draw one for him, I suppose. I know. I'll give him me. <laughs> That's the number he gave, Temple Bar 7407. Quiet.
Well, that's five, Bob. Oh, dear, Mr. Waterman, I've picked you. You know what they say. Unlucky in gambling, lucky in love. Well, honestly, for someone was fainting just now. Now, let's see what I've got. Miss Beeston. It's going to take a lot more than positive thought to win this kitty. I didn't see your half crown. All right, all right, it's in my pocket. Yes, well, I want to be quite sure the rest of the money isn't in the same place. I'll hold the stakes. How dare you? Oh, well, take it. I'm afraid it's black coffee and you've got no sugar. That's where you're wrong, mate. She's got the lot. And a ticket for Miss Blandish. Come on, dear, take a ticket. What for? Half a dollar. What does the field mean? It means you've got a very good chance. Come on, dear, the money, please. I've only got French francs. Oh, how many French francs in half a dollar? Well, we'll soon work that out. Come on, let's go into the kitchen and try and find some cups. Cups? The key. Hey? The key to the luggage boot. I want it open. Oh, the luggage boot? Yes. No. I don't want to get rough. Well, don't. Suppose you just listen to me for a moment. Everybody. Can you hear me? You three at the coach. We're listening. This whole village is extensively mined. Do you understand that? There is a series of crisscross wires laid across various approaches. And if any of those wires get tripped, they detonate a charge. So if you come back to this door along the lane you've already used, nothing else will go off. Is that clear? Quite clear. There wasn't much else to do but believe him. You keep behind me. You bring up the rear. I shall be bringing up something in a minute. What caused this sudden rush of knowledge? I did a bit of exploring. I found this at the house next door. It was wired through a staple, and the wire went down the side of the house and across the street. You tripped it, and that's what fired at you earlier. Oh, do be careful. Is it loaded? Yes, it's loaded. So we'll put it away for now. But I think we'll all have to stay here till daybreak. Daybreak? Ridiculous. But I have to be at my fort rally. If what Mr. Schroeder says is true, it really would be lunacy to drive out of here at night, even if the fog lifted. If what Mr. Schroeder said is true. Good heavens, man, what further proof do you need? Well, I still don't like the idea of staying here all night. Well, what's the alternative? Well, something's up there. The driver. Percy Lamps. Percy! Hang on, boy. I'll let you out in a minute. I don't know who you are, but whoever you are, if they've tied you up, you must be a friend, and I need a friend. There's a gun in my back, and then there's not. Then there's bodies, and then there's not. Then he's friendly, and then he's not. But there's been a driver, and now there's not. I'm going to drive on. Anyone who wants to can come with me. Percy, this is madness. I agree with our driver. I will not sleep here and be murdered in my bed. No, I agree with Miss Beeston. I don't fancy sitting here and waiting for something to happen. Good old Walty. Any more for the Skylark? Press on, my mare. Stay exactly where you are. I'm sorry to be melodramatic, but no one's going to leave this place. Now, everyone, get over there. Everyone. Fine. Fine. I was wondering when we get to a showdown. Get over there. I'm afraid I told you a lie. 
That gun isn't loaded. But this one is. Perhaps you'd better get over there. Next time you wear fancy dress, make sure the decorations are on right. That DFC there, it's back to front. The stripes are going the wrong way. First thing I noticed. Don't try that, Owen. I'm not taking my eyes off you for a moment. All right, hold it! Come on, Owen! Grab him! Get him! him. Nice work, George! Oh, sorry I kept you tied up for so long. Oh, forgive me, Mr. Bell. Madam! Here, you're the body in the boot. Stupid fools! I'm a police officer! Perhaps you'll explain all this. Yeah, I'm on your side. With the DFC back to front? Someone's going to get a rocket for that. I'm not a pilot. I'm attached to London Airport Security. And what are you doing on this coach? Trailing a rather slippery bullion thief known as the banker. You mean that he? Is he the banker? Stone the crows. He is a police officer. Of course I am, you stupid madman. Give me that wallet. It was a French thriller once where two lots of police shot each other up. Do you want to get shot up? No. Well, shut up. You've seen my identification papers. Now, what about yours? George is my identification. George Davis. He was the relief driver of the coach. We put him in the boot to have reinforcements handy. We bound him for effect in case the banker got there first. The relief driver, Mr. Lamb. Now, look, for a start, I usually drive for BEA. All I know is this. I walk in the lounge, you grab me, and before I know where I am, I'm driving for BOAC, not BEA. OK? Now, sort that lot out. I don't accept your story. I'm afraid you've no alternative. You'll just have to take my word. Now, over there, Mr. Schroeder. And the rest of you. Quickly. I'll tell you this, though. When we arrived here tonight, I had no idea who the banker was. I had my suspicions, but I wasn't sure. Then someone made a very silly mistake. Now I know. Well, who? Tell us before we get our throats cut. You're going to have to wait until the police get here. You see, I don't know how many accomplices we have with us. We can't just stay here with a scoundrel amongst us. And I don't distress yourself. One of them is the policeman. Yes, but he's the one who doesn't know. Well, you've no right to place us in danger by not telling. You're in no danger while we leave the banker anonymous. Because the person is still thinking, I've got the wrong one. Here, I wonder who's won the sweep. I've got the field. You ought to be in one, dear. The police ought to have been here before now. I gave them direction and mileage. They'll be here if you gave that message to the Temple Bar number. Oh, yes. Unfortunately, you gave them the wrong directions. We're nowhere near Maidenhead, but a few miles west of High Wycombe. High Wycombe? How do you know? Because when explosions keep happening in an area, no one comes to see about it. It means that that area is used to explosions. But why High Wycombe? Because that's the only place this side of the river where explosions are accepted. It's the Army's battle training ground. What? This is a commando village. I was sure of it when I found the body on the gallows that the driver ran into. It was a dummy used for bayonet practice. This whole place is fenced off from the public. They trained here under actual battle conditions. You drove here through a minefield. Quick, she's fainted. Is there room for one more? Sounds as if the Marines have landed, doesn't it, Schroeder? Oh, dear, I feel most peculiar. There are hooter noises. And my head's rumbling. It's not your head, dear. It's real rumbles. No! <laughs> First person to move gets shot. Go and start up the engine. You won't get away with this, you know, Miss Banker. As a lesson for next time, what did I do wrong? You were far too anxious to get that extra coach put on. You were yelling about Blackbush Airport before you even knew whether the Dublin planes went from there or from Northolt. Not very conclusive evidence, Mr. Security. And your sidekick out there who's having so much trouble with that engine. He never came in on the jet from Johannesburg because it didn't land there. It should have done, but it was detoured through the fog to her. They didn't announce it at London Airport and you didn't trouble to find out. That was slip number two. Slip number three was your boyfriend's passport. The last embarkation stamp in it was dated two months ago instead of today. I must remember that next time. You should always check with air travel. You think you've been very smart, don't you? 
Well, I have. You're going to find it takes more than positive thought to start the engine without this rotor arm. I give you three seconds to give me that. One. Two. Yes, Grandma. I know I've been out all night. I'll tell you about it later. It's a long story. Later! Did she give me breakfast? What do you mean? Now, Grandma, I've been through a lot last night. Don't needle me. Look, I must go now, dear. They're taking off the gold. The gold! They're taking... Oh, oh, it's no good. You'll have to get yourself fitted. They're on the National Health. I said... Sh oh, never mind. No. Hello. Oh, she's passed. Poor old soul. I don't often bear a grudge, but I intend to make you an exception. I'll get you for this. Oh, naughty, Mr. Waterman. Come on. Want to know something awful? What? I feel rather sorry for the old battle yeah, I feel sorry for Holloway Prison. I'm told they dread having her back. What I can't understand is where they were going to take the gold. yoo hoo yoo -hoo! <sighs> The police are giving me a lift to Basingstoke. Good. So I have to say goodbye now. If you're ever anywhere near 25 Nettlebed Road, drop in. We could have some fun talking all this over. I will. Oh. I will. 25 Nettlebed Road. So Percy messed it all up by turning through a minefield. Percy did. The loot's away, miss. Right, Percy. Home. We're proud of you. Oh. <laughs> Nothing really. <laughs> yeah. Ben Beeston sent that message to her sister, remember? It was a Hounslow number, the lookout house near the airport. The message told them to wait, no matter how late she was. I forgot to send it. You're a smart girl. Smart enough to know when a DFC's back to front. I was in the Navy. Hey! Fancy bed and Zeke, what's the hurry? Hurry? I've just realized I've won the sweep. You don't have to go mad, do you? No, mad. I am mad. The old girl's got my money!